welcome to my lecture on critical path method here we are going to see how to calculate the duration of the project critical path and total float for the individual activities so the project for which we are going to do these things are given below and here the first column which shows the interrelationship between each nodes so for the first activity which starts from node 1 and ends at node 2 and it takes 8 weeks to complete similarly each and every activities are given below and their duration is given in the next column so now in order to solve this problem easily we can have an another column in which the name of the activities are given say for example for the activity A in which the node 1 to 2 similarly the node 1 to 3 represent the activity P which takes 7 weeks duration likewise the interrelationship between the nodes as well as the name of the activities are given below so now let us see how to construct the network diagram so first let us take the activity which starts from node 1 to 2 and here we have connected the node 1 and 2 the activity is represented by the arrow mark and which is activity A similarly the next activity is from 1 to 3 so we have drawn a line from 1 to 3 and which is represented by the activity B likewise the next activity is 1 to 5 and here we have drawn a line from 1 to 5 which represent the activity C and the next activity is 2 to 3 so here a line is drawn which connects from 2 to 3 and the name of the activity is D and the next activity is 2 to 4 so here a line is drawn from 2 to 4 and the activity is represented as E so likewise activity 3 to 4 which represent activity F 3 to 5 which represent activity G 3 to 6 which denotes the activity H 4 to 6 which represent the activity I and 5 to 6 which represents the activity J which are drawn so now the network diagram is completed okay so in which the node 1 is the starting point and node 6 is the ending point so now we are going to use this network diagram to find out the total duration of the project as well as critical path and other values which are related to the network diagram so here you can see the exaggerated view of the network diagram so the activities are replaced by a, a simple tabular column which represent activity which stands for A and T which stands for duration of an activity ES which denotes the earliest start time EF which denotes the earliest finish time of an activity LS which denotes latest start time LF which denotes the latest finish time of the project now let us uh, fill the first column which represent the activity as well as the duration of the activity so first one which is activity name is A and which takes 8 weeks to complete likewise next one activity B which takes 7 weeks to complete activity C which takes 12 weeks to complete activity D which takes 4 weeks to complete activity E which takes 10 weeks to complete 
activity F which takes three weeks to complete activity G which takes five weeks to complete activity H which takes 10 weeks to complete activity I which takes seven weeks to complete and activity J which takes four weeks to complete now we have filled all the first column in in their activities okay so now we will do forward pause that means we are going to move from starting point to end point that means from node 1 to node 6 so in which we are going to calculate the earliest start time and earliest finish time of individual activities now let us come to activity A here the A can be started at the beginning of the day that means the zeroth day so the earliest start time for the activity A is 0 and the earliest finish time is calculated by adding the earliest start time plus the duration of the activity. So the earliest finish time of activity A is 0 plus 8. So it is going to be 8. Likewise for activity B it can also be started at the 0th day so the earliest starting time is 0 and the earliest finish time is 0 plus 7 which is equal to 7 likewise the activity 0 can also be started at the 0th day and the earliest finish time is calculated by adding 0 plus 12 that is 12 okay now let us move on to the activity D activity D needs input from activity A so the earliest starting time of activity D is equal to earliest finish time of activity A so here we have mentioned that as 8 so the earliest finish time is 8 plus 4 that is going to be 12 and next the activity E so here the earliest start time of activity E is the the earliest finish time of activity J because activity E has a preceding activity that is J. So we have to take the earliest finish time of A as the earliest starting time of E. Okay. So the earliest finish time of activity E is 8 plus 10 that is 18. Now let us move on to activity F. So here we have got two preceding activity for F that is B and D. So we have two earliest finish time. One is 12 which is corresponding to activity D and another one is 7 which is corresponding to activity B. So for activity F since it has two preceding activity we have to choose the maximum of these two values that is 7 and 12 so in which the maximum value is 12 so the earliest start time of f is 12 and the earliest finish time is 12 plus 3 it is going to be 15 next one activity g similar to that of activity f it also has got two preceding activity namely b and d so we have to choose the maximum value of 7 and 12 so the activity g has the earliest starting time of 12 and by adding with the duration of the activity g we can get the earliest finish time of g is 17 next activity h so similar to that of f and g it has also got the earliest starting time as 12 because it has got the same preceding activity as that of f and g that is b and d so the maximum of 7 and 12 which is 12 that is taken as earliest starting time and by adding the duration of the activity h we can get the earliest finish time that is 22 now the next activity is i the activity i has got two preceding activities that is f and e so 
the maximum number of the earliest finish time that is 15 and 18 from which the maximum is 18 that value is taken as the earliest start time so the i has the earliest start time of 18 and the earliest finish time is going to be 18 plus 7 that is 25 so now let us find out the earliest starting time of j so here it has got two preceding activity one is c another one is g so we have to select the maximum value between 12 and 17 so here the maximum value is taken as 17 so the activity j has a starting time of early starting time of 17 by adding it with the duration we can find out the earliest finish time that is going to be 21 so now we have completed the forward pass so in which the earliest finish time of three tail activities j h and i so one has 21 the h has 22 and the i has 25 so here we have to choose the maximum earliest finish time of all these three tail activities and which is 25 so the project duration is 25 weeks now we are going to see how to do backward pass to find out latest finish and latest starting time of individual activity for the activity i h and j the latest finish time is 25 that is the total duration of the project so now to find out the latest start time of i is we have to subtract the duration of individual activity from the latest finish time that is 25 minus 7 it is 18 and for the activity h it is 25 minus 10 it is 15 for the activity j it is 25 minus 4 it is 21 now let us move on to activities c and g these two activities has only one successor that is j so the latest starting time of activity j that is 21 is going to be the latest finish time of these activities that is the activity g has a tot latest finish time of 21 and c has the same value that is 21 so for latest start time so we have to subtract the total duration of the individual activity from the latest finish it is 21 minus 12 it is 9 for the activity g it is 21 minus 5 it is 16 now for the activities e and f let us see how to find out the latest finish time so these two activities has only one successor that is i so the latest starting time of the activity i is going to be latest finish time of activity f and e that is 18 and here the latest starting time is 18 minus 10 that is 8 and here 18 minus 3 it is 15 so the latest starting time of activity e and f are found now for the activity b and d so for activity b and d we have got three successor that is f h and g so we have to look at the latest starting time of f that is 15 for h it is 15 and for g it is 16 so we have to select the minimum value of these three that is 15 it is going to be the latest finish time of d and b so for b the latest starting time is 15 minus 7 that is 8 for d the latest start time is 15 minus 4 that is 11 now for the activity a how to find out the latest finish time activity a has got two successor that is e and d so e has got 8 as latest start time and d 
has got 11 as latest start time so we have to choose minimum of these two values that is 8 and 11 we have to choose the minimum of these two values that is 8 it is going to be latest finish time of activity a and the latest start time is 8 minus 8 that is 0 now the backward pass is completed now let us see how to find out the total float or otherwise we can call that as slack value it is found by using the formula that is latest start minus earliest start or latest finish minus earliest finish for the for the activity a it is 0 minus 0 or 8 minus 8 it is 0 for activity b 8 minus 0 or 15 minus 7 that is 8 for activity d it is 3 likewise we can calculate the total float value for all the activities so now let us see how to find out the critical path so here the total float value for some activity is 0 for some activity is some value so what does it mean for the activities that has zero slack value it means that activity cannot be delayed even a single week say for example for activity a if it is delayed by one week then the total duration of the project will be increased by one week that means it is going to be 26 weeks whereas for the activity d it has got total float value of 3 so it means activity d can be delayed for 3 weeks so it can be started anywhere between 8 and 11 weeks similarly it can be finished at anywhere between 12 and 15 weeks so the activities which has zero total float values are selected that is 1 to 2 which represent the activity a 2 to 4 that represent activity e 4 to 6 that represent activity i this is called critical path that is 1 to 2 2 to 4 4 to 6 thank you for watching the lecture